Welcome, welcome, welcome to this channel Baruch Haba Bashem Yahuwah and today we are going to do chapter and part 6 of the in-depth study from faith to faith. The title is The Seat of the Most High. We go to the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 3, verse 19, verse 24, and verse 37. He spake to them many things in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went forth to sow. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the evil one, and snatcheth away that which hath been sown in his heart. Another parable set he before them saying the kingdom of heavens is likened unto a man that sowed good seed in his field and he answered and said he that soweth the good seed is the son of man then we go to john 12 verse 24 to 26 Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a grain of wheat fall into the earth and die, it abideth by itself alone. But if it die, it beareth much fruit. He that loveth his life looseth it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life unto life eternal if any man serve me let him follow me and say where i am there shall also my servant be if any man serve me him will the father honor One, the first two of the seven parables of Yahshua recorded in Matthew 13 are first the parable of the sower and second the parable of the good and bad seeds. In the first one, the master tells the dis disciples that the seed which the man sows in the Most High's word, which is the word of the kingdom. In the second parable, the master says that the one who sows the good seed is the son of man and that the good seed sown are the sons of the kingdom. In the first parable, the seed is the word of the kingdom, which is the word of the Most High. But in the second parable, the seed are the sons of the kingdom who are people born of the Most High. So that when the master, who is the son of man, sows, he sows not only the word but also men. He comes to this world not only to proclaim the Most High's word, but to obtain a group of people as well, he will scatter this people abroad as seed. In the book of scriptures, we find on the one hand that the word which Yah, uh, the Most High has spoken is called the word of the Most High. 
and on the other hand the son whom the most high has sent is also called the word of the most high in the beginning was the word comma and the word was with the most high but here is it stated as god messengers are also being called as gods nothing is what it seems like in this world and it seems that yashua whom we call yashua or Yahshua is the orchestrate and chief messenger Michael and Michael is part of a collective called Michael and he's a paradise son according to the book of Orantia so I would go on a journey whom really the son of the most high is because then you get a deeper understanding also about the word and the word was the most high John 1 verse 1 this is the most misunderstood piece of scripture because no one really can understand what it is saying here this word has become flesh and has dwelt for a time in our midst being full of grace and truth John 1 14 we know from the writings of John that this points to Mashiach Yeshua. Hence the word of the Most High in the book of scriptures sometimes refers to the spoken word of the Most High. But sometimes it also refers to the living word or the Most High's living word. That is to say to the Son of the Most High, the Son of Man. For the Most High Son is the Word, the Living Word, the Word of Life. When we hear Him, we hear the Word. When we see Him, we see the Word. And when we touch Him, we touch the Word. Our master, Yeshua, is the Most High Seat, as well as the Most High's Word. Except a grain of wheat fall into the earth and die, it abided by itself alone. But if it dies, it beareth much fruit. John 12, 24. This unquestionably points to the master, Yeshua. He is that seed or grain of wheat that is sown and dies and which then bears much fruit, having been begotten again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible through the word of the Most High. Which liveth and abideth. First Peter one twenty three. The Master Yahshua is the Word of the Most High, but He also is the Seat of the Most High. So let us praise the Master for this. Our Most High sent His Son into the world and planted Him as a seat. The Master Yahshua or Yahshua 
did not come only for the sake of preaching the word of the Most High, he also came to be the word of the Most High. He is not only the preacher, he himself is also the word preached. He is the seed just as he is the sower. For what the Most High sows is not just some words, he sows a person so that the master, Yeshua, is indeed a seed, a good seed. Two, suppose we are asked to go to a distant place to preach the word, you have the seal and you are willing to go for the writing's sake. You should know, however, that it is not enough simply for you to go and preach because the Most High wants to sow you as seed. Do you see this? The Most High wants to sow you. You yourself are to be the seed sown. And that is why no one understands what the ministry of the most high of the most high's word means you're not just a preacher pastor evangelist it's a ministry of the word the living word being a preacher of the most high's word is a ministry but no one knows this Many lack true knowledge about what it is to run a ministry based on speaking and bringing forward the word, the living word of the Most High. The same for, pre, uh, for prayer. Prayer is a ministry, but no one knows a thing about prayer and do not know how to run a correct prayer ministry. What is a ministry? We, we people are so uh, caught up with fancy words. We like to speak fancy words. But actually, we lack understanding of what these fancy words mean. Ministry means service. So, do you see this, that the Most High wants to sow you, you yourself, are to be the seed sown? So that is why, if you speak the Most High's word, that you speak it from His Holy Spirit, His Ruach HaKodesh, also known that you speak it from the Most High's mouth itself and not from a theology course or study you have done in your life and according man's rules that you speak the word of the Most High according to some rules that man has set for themselves. So, no doubt, the Most High will work in man through his own word. When we preach the word of the Most High's writings to man, we are sowing his word in them and we expect a harvest. Well, how can you expect a harvest if the majority of preachers, evangelists, and pastors have no clue what they're actually doing? Yet we cannot be considered as doing the work of the Most High if we only see the Word as 
the Most High's seat and not men as well. It is wrong for us to conclude that we may so seat as long as the word we preach is basically sound and the exposition we give is pure. How often the work of the Most High suffers because the seat in our hand is merely some objective doctrines which have not subjectively transformed us to be sons of the kingdom. Well, that's the whole point here. How often the work of the Most High suffers because the seat in our hand is merely some objective doctrines. which have not subjectively transformed us to be sons of the kingdom. I had to repeat this because the, I had to do a short break due to uh, other reasons. We are therefore faced with a tremendous problem. What kind of seat are we? That's a good question. For the seed of the Most High is not just words. His seed is also you and me as a person. The good seed is not only the word of the kingdom, but is also a person as the son of the kingdom. Such being the case, we need to ask ourselves this searching question. How many among us can truly serve as the Most High's seat? How pitiful for me to have to report that our seat is mainly objective, scarcely subjective. Whether or not we as persons can be the Most High Seat is really a tremendous problem. For basically, the, uh, the Master has no thought of merely sending out a company of people as evangelists or a group of persons as the Scriptures teaches. As, uh, scripture teachers on the contrary his main thought is for him to use men themselves as seed he is anxious to plant as seed those who belong to him if this be so we must reflect as to what will be the fruit that grows out of us if we are sown as seed for whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap galatians 6 verse 7 people we have helped frequently turn out to be like us in short what we ultimately reap proves what kind of seed we have been hence let us not sigh saying who hath believed our message Isaiah 53 verse 1 Nor let us murmur to the effect of how helpless we are because people's ears are so heavy that they are unwilling to hear the pure word of the Most High. The real issue is, what are we? Good seed is not merely the word of the kingdom, it is also the sons of the kingdom after we are sown by the Most High. What will grow out of us? Are we aware of whether what we preach is merely a discussion of matters concerning a far away country, or does it relate to those things which have happened right here in our own lives? Because we are so focused on things outside ourselves and in other places of the world, we're so conditioned to have our focus on places and people um, 
that are living in other parts of the world instead of being focused on the people in our surroundings local surroundings um, Uh, do we find a passage in the scriptures and then try to expound it or do we quote that same passage because we have touched spiritual reality before the most high well the majority of the people who read the most high's word are not able even to uh, touch the reality behind the words the most most people are only scratching the surface that's it and they uh, need at least 10 20 30 or 40 years for that without even having touched the reality behind each word that the most high is speaking to us and most people are quoting scriptures instead of knowing them and truly understanding the in-depth, the inner, 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 in-depth, the uttermost in-depth of the piece of scripture they are quoting. Let alone the reality that is being reflected in that piece of scripture they are quoting. We ought to know that there is a world of difference between these two approaches. Many words are delivered up as but a mer dissertation only the words spoken by those who intimately know the most high are truly seed for planting let us not tell people of the various things and teachings which our clever minds conceive rather we must sow into people's ears the word which we have seen and known before the most high for in proclaiming the word of the Most High, it is not so much a matter of our eloquence as it is the incorporation of Mashiach, Yahshua, into our lives. Do we speak an objective doctrine or, other, or are we uttering what we have subjectively experienced? Many can only deliver <clears throat> objective truths or doctrines which fail to become operative in people's lives. Only when the speaker is also the very word he delivers can he help people. For the word of the Most High is not for mental appreciations. Otherwise, the clever would have a real advantage over the foolish. But the Most High never differentiates between the clever and the foolish. When His Word comes upon us, it will be tested just as the paint on porcelain will be brushed off if it has not passed through fire. But if the paint has been burned into the porcelain, it cannot be removed, even if washed with water. How many doctrines can so easily be brushed off in people's lives? Only by the favor of the Most High can these doctrines be made fast and secure as He burns them as it were, into us by environment and revelation. The Most High will work time and time again until His Word becomes that which has been deeply worked into our lives. And to be very honest, actually sometimes, well not sometimes, many days I'm asking why is it that I get your Word a few seconds before end why didn't I got this at least 20 years earlier 
because it takes a huge amount of time to really live in accordance with his word become his word because the majority of believers only read the book of scriptures as a book they never ever got the deeper uttermost deep 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 understanding of the words let alone that they are living by it by becoming the word of the most high himself then we ourselves become that word through the discipline and the revelation of the holy spirit a certain word is inwrought into one's life until he becomes that very word and when later you meet that person you will not deem him eloquent in delivering that word but will instead acknowledge him as being that word uh, veritably that means that man has become the seat of the Most High that is what it actually means if you walk the path of Mashiach Yahshua then you become the seat of the Most High that was the, the path that he walked and that was what he was he was the seat of the Most High now it is precisely in this way that the Most High spreads his word otherwise the preaching of uh, the Most High's word descends into merely being the passing of a word from one mind to another mind we need to become the word we need to live by it we need to absorb his word as putting on a dress or putting on a trouser or putting on a jacket we have to become his word with the result that the assembly will become shallower and shallower and fall far short of spiritual life and reality well I can say that the, uh, the majority of assemblies today are nothing more than empty shells there's nothing in it they there's no in no way shape or form uh, any kind of spiritual life in it let alone reality consequently the issue before us is whether or not we can be the most high seat what part in our life may be considered the most high seat suppose he today were to sow you and me as seed, what would we produce that's a good question what is the seed that you are now producing whatever a man sows that he shall reap there is no ex uh, exception to this rule how very sad if the fruit we produce uh, constitutes nothing more than causing people to know a little more about facts teachings and doctrines but failing to help them touch the master's life where not many of us are able to do so I think that is just a small group of people that have been able to do so and then free the most high's purpose in sowing is of course for reaping let us therefore look for a moment at the principle of the most high's reaping except a grain of wheat fall into the earth and die it abideth by itself alone but if it die it beareth much fruit John 12 24 this verse unfolds how the master Yeshua 
must die if he is to distribute life to us. We see then that the path of reaping lies in dying. It lies in the stake. The Most High's purpose in sowing is to obtain fruit. His aim for a grain of wheat is for it to bear many more grains. He did not send a prophet or even many prophets to expound clearly. His doctrines, he instead sent his own son as a seed of wheat to fall into the earth and die, that he might bear much fruit. Fruit bearing is not the result of clear exposition of the teachings and doctrines of the assembly, nor is it the consequence of family with scripture passages. It is the result of a falling into the earth and dying. And such is the work of the stake. The stake is an experience, not only a doctrine. If there has really been death, then there will really be fruit. But if no death, then there will be no fruit. So that is also one of the reasons why we do still not see the fruit that the Most High wants to see on this planet because many people didn't die at all in spiritual sense. They did an immersion, but the rest of the work they didn't do. So the power of the stake in combination with the disciplinal work of the Holy Spirit, or for many known as the Ruach HaKodesh, couldn't do its work in them. So they, they didn't die, spiritually speaking. The degree of death determines the amount of life. The number of stripes measures the totality of life overflowing. The word in John 12, 24 refers primarily to the master himself. But in verse 25, he immediately explains to us that the word he speaks is also a principle that not only applies to his own life and his own self, but is also applicable universally. He that loveth his life looseth it. What does this mean? If you love the carnal life, the solical life, the natural life, you love the world. So you will lose it. But if you hate your natural life, if you hate your solical life, if you hate your natural strength, you hate the world you are in. And then you will have eternal life. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. So it will be changed into eternal life because by hating this life that you live in this world, hating your uh, natural life, hating your solical life means that you are done with it and that you don't uh, care about the fact that you will die and you have no problems to die for the Most High because you know that the life you will get then will be of eternal life. Clearly, this is spoken to all, yet even more clear is verse 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will the Father honor. This makes it even plainer that all who would serve him, the Master, 
Yahshua must do precisely the same. So, if we truly want to follow the Master, we need to do as what He did, becoming the Word of the Most High itself. The Word, we need to become His Word. The Word uh, is not just a Word, we need to become it by living it. That is what our Master, Yahshua, did, or Yahshua did. He was the living embodiment of the Word. That's why it's called Living Word. Because He, he lived by it. Do we live by the Word of the Most High? Is the Word of the Most High in such a way embodied by us that we all live it? No. <clears throat> Notice that this matter of a grain of wheat falling into the earth and dying is not related to atonement since in the realm of atoning for sins we sinners have absolutely no participation whatsoever. It relates instead to the laying aside of the self-life. And according to this principle, life comes out of death. This is exactly what Paul says. Death worketh in us, but life in you. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 12 Life out of death and such is the way of bearing fruit. Fruit bearing lies not in preaching or in teaching but in sowing. So, wow, keep this in mind. Fruit bearing lies not in preaching or in teaching but in sowing. How can you sow if you yourself have become the Word of the Most High itself? If you embody it, if you are living by it, then you sow. As the Most High has not sent His Son to the world to preach, but has instead sown his son. So if we embody the word of the Most High, what have we become? We have become ourselves the living seed. By living in, by living the word of the Most High itself. Not by teaching it alone, but by living it ourselves. We need to become the Word itself. That is the whole thing. It's not about preaching and teaching the Word, but it's all about becoming the living Word itself. And who is the living Word? That is what is known as Yeshua HaMashiach because he embodied the word of the Most High. He became it. He was it. He was his word. So we need to become the word of the Most High. We need to live it. We need to embody it. We need to become it. Um, instead sown his son as seed in the ground, so the Most High will sow us as seed everywhere. A grain of wheat needs to fall into the earth and die before it 
can bear fruit, but before it falls into the earth it has a hard outer shell. This outer shell needs to be broken down. What is this hard outer shell? That is your outer man. That is the outer man that encapsulates your spirit and makes sure that your spirit can't live and embody the word of the Most High and become the word of the Most High. That is the outer shell. That is the soul. That is the solical life. That is the natural strength. That is the natural humanness. This shell can protect the grain, but it can also hinder it from bearing fruit. The life within cannot be released until this outer shell is broken. But as the grain falls into the earth, its outer shell is gradually broken up and decayed through a chemical reaction with the water and the earth, and thus its inner life is released. The Master himself was this very grain of wheat of which he spoke that fell into the earth, that died. And then bore much fruit. Life out of death was a fact in the earthly life of our Master, and so it is to be with us in our lives. Fruit bearing through death was our Master's experience, and so must it be our experience too. The principle of fruit bearing, therefore, is not one of simply preaching but of dying. People can know and will recognize who has fallen into the earth and died. This is what is mentioned with knowing the tree by its fruit. That's the other parable. Knowing the tree by its fruit means did the, the tree went through the process of dying and resurrection. Did it broke the outer shell in such a way that the spirit could become the word of the Most High itself and so could become the seat of the Most High itself? And who has not? Whether one has died to the self-life or not may be judged by the absence or presence of the outer self. So that is what you can see in most assemblies today. The people who are calling themselves pastor, preacher, teacher, evangelist or whatever title they have given to themselves these people, most of them, didn't die at all because they are still living the solical life. They are still standing there from their natural humanness. And um, they are still doing the things from their natural strength, from their natural self. Alas, how much natural softness as well as natural hardness we still have about us. Whether it be softness or hardness, it is the outer shell of the natural self-life which blocks the outflow of divine life within, so that people are unable to touch that inner life. Only through the working of the stake will this outer shell be broken. You need the power of the stake but we can do this. It is the Holy Spirit that uses the power of the stake in us to discipline our spirit and our soul and to divide the spirit from the soul. 
the Most High is also doing this work and uncleaves the, our spirit from the soul. This is a process that we need to acknowledge and embrace and allow to take place within us. And yes, then you can experience moments that you have to go uh, uh, through unpleasantness, hardness, and probably a, 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 a deeper form of suffering. But know that each time you went, uh, that each time you go through a certain layer, in that process, you are able afterwards to embody the word of the Most High and to become the word of the Most High. And so each time you become more and more the seed of the Most High. As that is why I've said to the Holy Spirit and to the Most High that I allow all these processes to happen within me and that the Most High cleaves my spirit, uncleaves or separates uh, my spirit from my soul and to break the outer shell in me. And I've said to the Holy Spirit, please use the, uh, do your ministerial work in me and please use the power of the stake in me and through me so that I can become the word, the embodiment, that seat of the Most High so that I can become His Word. Amen. How difficult it is to touch the real person if he remains unbroken. You may talk with him for an hour, but you still feel the great distance between you and him. Exactly. And that is going on with many believers. You speak, but you feel the words do not cleave. They are still full with their own opinions. They still think they know it better. They still ha are uh, going along with all these doctrines and the research that they have done through Google. And they still go along with all the false beliefs and lies that uh, didn't that they didn't let go of. This is due to his uncracked shell, but with those whom the Most High has stricken, pressed and broken, you touch life when you touch them because the natural soulish part of their being has been broken. How true indeed! that only those who have fallen into the earth and died can bear fruit. So dying is actually a good thing, people. Before the Most High, those who have passed through death can alone bear fruit. Those who have not passed through death can never bear any fruit. For although it is possible for them to have tens of thousands of people following them, they still do not bear any fruit. Look at all these mega assemblies. They don't bear any fruit at all. The majority of the assemblies in the world today are fruitless. They don't bear any fruit. Because all the people that are coming there didn't die. They didn't went through the fire. They still are living their solical life. They still are living from their natural humanness. The preachers, the pastors and evangelists in these assemblies never died. They don't produce any fruit. Um, people following them, they still do not bear any fruit before the Most High because they have refused to die. I'm not refusing to die. I said to the Most High, please let me die because then I can become your good seed. Let me be and become your good seed. 
Let me become your seat. Let me become your word. Amen. To sum up, then the law of fruit bearing is death. Without death, the grain remains alone. May the Master have mercy upon us that we may be the seed of the Most High. May we fall into the earth and die that the Most High may reap much fruit from us. This is such an important and very in-depth study this morning. Um, and uh, it truly gives uh, a re the, the, the reality behind the Most High's Word. We have to become the Most High's Word, His seat. And that is why the Most High has asked me to do what I'm doing, to give you this information so you get a deeper understanding of the path that you are on. so that you can make a more clear choice for yourself. All right. Thank you so much for listening to it. And I would highly recommend to re-listen to it as much as possible and as many times as possible. Because every time you hear it uh, different because the things have sunk in and then another layer can come in of understanding. Uh, through which you will go into the more in-depth of what is being said here. All right. Um, I wish you all a Baruch day. Stay tuned to this channel because there will come a lot of uh, good food for your spirit the coming weeks and uh, coming months. I think I will be busy with this till the beginning of the fifth month which is in the Roman calendar the M A Y month um, and thank you so much for doing a little donation and know that you will be tremendously baruched for it because you are giving something back to the Most High. It's not about me, it's about the Most High. You do that for the Most High. All right. So thank you so much. And Baruch Abba Shem Yahuwah. And I'll see you next time. Hallelujah.